Hi, it's Lipstick Gal. Thank you so much for watching today. I'm gonna do a quick get ready with me and I just started pulling out some things that I had kind of forgotten about. <laughs> You ever do that where you're like, oh yeah. That happens sometimes in my refrigerator. I'll like go to the back and be like, oh, forgot about that. And sometimes I get there before it's dead and sometimes I don't. So I just thought about that as I was cleaning out the refrigerator today. It's like, you know what? I'm gonna go through some of my drawers and my other places and um, I'm gonna use some things I haven't used in a while. So I am going to start with this. This is the Airbrush Flawless Foundation from Charlotte Tilbury. I haven't used this in has it been a year? I think it's been a year. So when this came out, I'm just gonna start going here. When this came out last fall, it was not my favorite. And I, this is where I remind you my preferences. I do not happen to prefer a full coverage foundation. There are very few full coverage foundations that like really make me go, yes more of that please and this is one that just felt a little heavy so I'm mixing in a little bit of the flawless filter here with it um, I have shade two in the foundation and uh, shade one in the flawless filter and we're gonna do this so I've got the back of my hand like a little mixing palette and I'm just gonna oh <gasps> oh this is more than I'm used to this is a lot time to blend boy I think probably have mixed too much. I think that the reason that I didn't like this is I didn't feel that it looked as good on my skin, I'm 45. It really felt like it sat and looked heavy. And I felt like it worked best when I was able to cut it down with something where it wasn't just straight foundation because it's a lot more full coverage than I'm used to or that I'm comfortable with but you know I guess we're putting it on like spackle today right remember when I first tried this I tried at the same time I tried this little guy here from Charlotte Tilbury the magic vanish which I absolutely love but I didn't when I first got it so I was kind of hoping because I changed my mind about the magic vanish that maybe if I tried this again I would be like you know what Actually, I kind of like that. The one thing I am gonna do is I'm gonna take a damp beauty sponge and just kind of press into this. I like the coverage that I get with a brush like this, but sometimes I feel like with a heavier coverage foundation, it can end up looking a little, I see the texture of the bristles. Not that it's streaky, because it's not, but I feel like in doing this, since I have a flat surface, that it kind of helps it look more skin-like. Oh yeah, it's already looking better. I did end up with way too much foundation on the back of my hand. So, just gonna wipe it off and keep going. I normally put this down before foundation and I, all I can say is I'm not paying attention today, but I'm gonna throw a little bit of the Magic Vanish kind of in the inner corner and then we'll, um, and right down here, and then we'll throw on some concealer. It's amazing how well this covers my hyperpigmentation spot. Just, you know, a thinned out version of this foundation. Wow. So for concealer today, this is one that I kind of rediscovered recently. I've been sitting here slightly neglected. Um, this is the Too Faced Multi-Use Sculpting Concealer. And I feel like it's a really, like, where's my hyperpigmentation spot? <laughs> Maybe just a light little dot here. I feel like this is a really great concealer. I might just use this to give a little extra boost of coverage where you need it. I still like it. I think it's still a really great concealer. My favorite under eye powder used to be this. I promise it's not a Charlotte Tilbury video, um, but this is the Airbrush Flawless Filter. And since I have a sizable amount of pan here, you can tell I love this powder. This is also, I think, my third or fourth compact of this. And it used to be the only thing I used under my eyes. And then, <laughs> I found some other stuff that I feel like works really well at a lower price point. So I kind of haven't used this one in a while. Another powder I wanted to use today was this. This is the Huda Beauty Baking Powder, the Easy Bake Powder. I have the shade Pound Cake. I loved this last fall and I used it like incessantly, especially just to set like my nose, like right across the tops of my pores right here. And then I forgot about it. 
and I forget how highly scented this is until I open it up and it's like, whoa. It's a very strongly scented powder. If you don't like scents, this is definitely not one I would recommend for you. I don't use it all over the face because it is a really matte powder. And if I use too much, it can look too cakey. So I'm just gonna hit my T-zone with it and then we'll probably go back to the Charlotte Tilbury for the rest of the face. Put a giant powder brush in here and hit the rest of my face. Make sure that we're, we're well set. Ooh, I feel like I'm riding a fine line here. I haven't looked this matte in forever and I'm, I feel like I'm right on the edge of too much. In the vein of haven't used it in a long time, it made me think of this Fenty bronzer. This one is their Sunstalker bronzer and I have the shade Into Sun. And I haven't used this long time, probably since spring. And it's a really beautiful shade. It's the lightest shade they have. It's a really nice bronzer, but we're just gonna throw a little bit of this on. Fall kind of had a moment and is over. The weather is getting really chill. It got really cold for a while at the end of October and then we had like a week of like 65 degree weather and now it's starting to get cold again. And I feel like we never really got a real fall. I feel like fall's supposed to stick around through like the end, like Thanksgiving time, but I don't think that's gonna happen this year. I think I'm gonna have to leave this out where I can reach for it more because it's really beautiful. Talk about a blush I haven't reached for in forever. This uh, Papa Don't Peach from Too Faced, it still has the slightest peach scent to it, but I used to love this blush. It's really pretty. It still looks lovely. Remember when this whole peach collection came out and we were all going nuts for it? I forgot that this has a little bit of a of a shine to it. It's a, kind of like a satin blush. I like that. Oh, I forgot about that. It's kind of pretty. Hmm. This powder from Lancome is one of my favorite subtle highlights. This is the Absolute Powder. Um, my big pet peeve is the packaging. All of this gold is just coming up and it's flaking off everywhere. Blech. I hate that, but the powder itself is beautiful. I feel like they could do a better job with the packaging, especially if they're gonna charge an arm and a leg for it like they do for this powder, because <laughs> this is expensive powder. So I try and make sure I have like a real light dusting of this, and then I just hit all the high points of my face. This is such a gorgeous powder. I forget how good it is until I bring it out again. It brings life to my face. I like that it's a little bit, but not too much. I think I might've put too much on my forehead. I'm starting to look like the Tin Man just a little bit, but somehow I'm okay with that. I've been so in love with my Anastasia brow pen that I just haven't used anything else, but today I'm gonna to be using uh, the Ultra Fine Brow Pencil from CoverGirl. I love this pencil. I feel like if you're looking for a skinny pencil from the drugstore, this one is really good. I feel like it walks that line of laying down pigment but not being too creamy. Some pencils are too dry and they're crumbly. Some pencils are too wet and sticky. <laughs> That's probably not a great way to explain it, but it, they just feel too much like a pomade. And I want something where I can actually get some definition, but not to the point where it's so sticky I get little chunks in my brows. And I feel like this one is perfect. So for a little tint and set in my brows today, I'm gonna to be using the Glossier Boy Brow. I haven't used this in a long time. This is one of those that um, I used to reach for on no makeup days just to give my, my brows just a little bit of a tint because I have really like darker brows to like the half and then from the half all the way out to the tail, it's kind of like four little hairs, that's what I feel like. So I used to use this like back combing through my brows to kind of lay down some pigment. And then I'll just go through, but it sets them really nicely. And on a light or no makeup day, sometimes all I'll use my brows is this, but I forgot that I had it because I've been using other products in that way. Oh, I just got some right here. Uh, to go along with my super intense brows today, I'm gonna be reaching for my ColourPop and Kathleen Light So Jaded palette. I haven't used this in a long time. I've been preferring smaller palettes and I have for quite a while. Um, I also don't love that this doesn't actually come with a mirror on the inside, but I'll make it work. Oh, I forgot how beautiful the shade is. This is called Rose Quartz. 
It's a gorgeous, gorgeous shade. I don't know that I want to do too much today. I'm going to dip into um, a darker, almost plummy shade. This one's called Jasper. I've also kind of been in the habit of like, I grab one eyeshadow brush and that's the only brush I use, but if I keep doing that here, I'm going to have a problem because it's too big and I'm getting it kind of low. I may need to switch it up. I'm going to pick up some of that first shade in Rose Quartz. Kind of run it right here on the underside. Sometimes I think the hard part about having a larger palette is there are so many possibilities. And I forget that people who create, you know, eyeshadow palettes usually lay things out so they're, you know, these guys will go together or this whole, whole row will work together. I frequently forget that and I just get completely overwhelmed by what I see. And I need to get over that. <laughs> Going into that um, slightly more burgundy shade called Jasper. I feel like my eye situation got a little bottom heavy here. <laughs> Give me a sec while I blend it out. There's this matte with a little bit of gold flecks in it in here called Ametrine. But I don't know that I'm gonna get those gold flecks to stick. <laughs> That's the one thing, ColourPop does that a lot, where they have a matte with you know some glitter in it. And I always like the way it looks in the pan and I can never really get it to look that way on the eye. I think I'm gonna throw this shade here kind of on the center of the lid. This is Smoky Quartz. Just kind of a little tap, 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 because I didn't really get much of the glitter coming through with that matte with the glitter. Somehow I knew that was gonna happen. I feel like it got away from me just, just a little bit today, but that's okay. I'm gonna throw on some liner and mascara and I will be right back. I feel like I need a little more blush. Like it's okay, but I, I'm feeling a little washed out. The eyes got a little more intense than I expected. So I'm gonna hit a uh, diffused heat from Hourglass. It's gonna bring just a little more color, not too much. Cause this is one, if I'm not careful, I definitely end up in clown territory. I think I'm gonna stick with a nude lip today, so I'm gonna start out with my Wayne Goss uh, Mauve Lip Liner. I should sharpen this. I'm gonna throw on some of this Charlotte Tilbury in Very Victoria. So I'm gonna throw on some of the Morphe Luminous Setting Spray. I haven't used this in a long time. This got a lot more intense than I intended, and I should have just used some lighter shades on the eyes. I think it was really that deep jasper color that really got me to kind of like this really smoky, plummy, mauve situation here. Did it to myself, which means that I need a little bit more blush. But um, overall, I think it's actually, it's kind of pretty. It's a little more intense than I was intending for just a stay at home kind of day, but you know, hey, that's all right. I feel like I need just a little bit of color. I don't know if that's any better. I'm forever concocting like a lipstick cocktail, so I just threw on a little bit of the Beauty Pie um, satin lipstick in the shade Pinup. I felt like I needed just a little bit more color. I don't know. Do you ever have that moment where you just can't pinpoint, there's nothing really like glaringly wrong. It's just not totally right. And it could be the orange shirt that I'm wearing with my mauve toned makeup. <laughs> it could be just that. <laughs> Anyway, you know what's interesting because I'm thinking about this. I can see why this foundation um, is one that I would use sparingly. It's probably one that I would like on days that I need just a little bit more coverage, but I would mix it with something else. So mixing it, and this is not a foundation, but mixing it with this gave it a, a sheerer, more natural appearance, but I can still see like right here in my small line, We've got a little bit of separation going on in there. And I was hoping that I wouldn't have that happen and that maybe pressing powder in there would help set it. But, you know, I'm getting more of those, you know, definition lines, you know, smile lines um, right around in here, you know, definitely expression lines in through here. And certain foundations just don't treat me the way they used to. And I think that this is one where if you like high coverage, I think it's gonna wear really well on you. But if you have any sort of um, deeper, 
wrinkles or creases, just be aware that it does kind of settle into those places. And that's probably why I don't continue to reach for this. But I could see myself mixing this with something a little bit lighter, like half a pump of this and a pump of something else and getting just a hair more coverage out of a lighter weight product. I can see why some of these were favorites. Um, favorites. I still remember really loving this blush, but I feel like with the look I did today, I needed a little bit more color than I was getting out of this. But I think on its own, it's a beautiful, soft, subtle, not too much. Um, but it was fun to kind of go back and go, I haven't used this in a while. I haven't used that in a while. And nothing here is like a glaring, like, you no longer belong in my collection. I don't feel like anything needs to be banished, you know, to the bad bin. Nothing, nothing needs to go away. But I definitely, definitely... Um, can see why these are still all part of my collection. I'm curious to know what one makeup item you have so many of you lose track of. Like for me, it's everything. I lose track of foundation, powder, conceal, like the whole shebang. Like you name it, I have too many of them. But most people are a little bit more able to rein in their instant, ooh, I want that. So you probably don't have as much as I do, but I would love to know if there is one weakness in your makeup collection, what is it? Is it blushes? Is it lipsticks? Is it eyeliners? Is it mascaras? And let me know what your favorite is within that category. Thank you so much for watching today. Have an amazing day and I will see you again soon. Bye.